What the hell? Hello? Hey man, what's going on? Um, you go down your window and talk to you a minute. Hey, what are you, what are you, what are you doing parked here? I'm waiting. This park, parking spot here is reserved for security, and I'm security. Uh, yeah, I don't see a sign or anything. Security? That's irrelevant. The, the fact of the matter is that this is my parking spot, and I need you to move your car ASAP. You're security? Yeah, I'm security, yes. I'm not in uniform right now, but that's irrelevant as well, okay? The fact is you need to move, okay? All right. I don't think so. I don't think I need to move. This is just oh, I, there's okay. plenty of spots here. This is Yo, just hold up. First off, talk about. I don't believe this is real. I don't believe this is real. That's one. Two. Ain't no way he's security walking over there looking like a hell's angel. And lastly, the people who know me well know that I have a problem with security guards. Honestly, it's not even a problem with security guards. I have a problem with security guards who abuse their imaginary authority. Parking spot. No, you don't need me to vest my authority from the state of California on you, do you? I don't even know what that means. That means that I have the authority to have you towed and removed from the premises as a security guard. I don't, I don't believe you. Okay, well, then I tell you what. You see that uh, coffee shop over there? I'm going to go get me a coffee, and I'll be back in around 30 minutes. If you're still here, then I'm going to assert my power, okay? You understand that? Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I just, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been talking to you pretty respectfully, and this is how you're going to address me? I'm a security, I'm a security officer. You're hanging inside my car. I don't see how you're being respectful to me. You know, the, I tell you what. You're all over my car with you your what, dirty I, I, hands. You know, forget the coffee. I want you to move your frick. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way you going to come knock my car window and tell me to move so you can park in your parking spot. It's not going down, sir. The thing about good men is that they're very difficult to get over on. So like I call myself the succubus, right? Because I can actually feed off you guys. We can all do it, by the way. Just, I know how. Anybody can do it. And the hardest people who often end up the best ones to feed off of energetic wise are the good, strong men. They also have the best quality semen. They're the good, strong, it's not men that's. Yo, hold on. Calling yourself an energy vampire is absurd. I've never actually heard somebody admitting to being an energy vampire. Spirit and everything. Um, them, them super, they don't have to be Christian, but them super like spiritual men, them. And they're and the good ones, and it's like cool, but it's like they got this six fucking sense about them that they can sense what I'm about to do, and I'm like fuck. So um, back in the day when I was just doing evil shit, there were some wonderful ones that I did hurt, um, and you know it wasn't that I didn't like them, but there was also kind of a man, fuck you for being so good. Like, why are you so good? Let me break you so you end up like me. But then also, it was like a like an annoyance, kind of like, God damn it, why won't you just do what I want you to do? Because they were too smart to do what I wanted them to do. The thing about good men. I know a lot of y'all be saying stuff when y'all see me burning my Polo Santo. But let me tell y'all something. Energy vampires are real. They are real. You might have an energy vampire in your life right now and don't even know that they feeding off of you. Doing YouTube, I see them a lot in the comment section. You see them in the comment section all the time. You might have a video that everybody likes, but they have to find something negative to say to see if you'd respond. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the out of the way. The since-deleted TikTok was created by Federal what? Way Police Officer Brianna Strauss, who said it was a public service announcement for other drivers. PSA to everyone out there. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the out of the way. Get the out of the way. In the 38-second clip, Strauss tells the viewers, quote, I can go 90 miles per hour. You can't. She also says officers will find a way to pull someone over. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. 
So you might as well get the f*** out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. Best way to find that out is get the f*** out of the way. In a statement to local media, the Federal Way Police Department said in part, quote, We have viewed the social media video posted by Officer Strauss and can assure you that it does not represent the core values and practices of our police department. Ooh. I don't know about that now. I do not know about that. I'm not going to point no elbows or no fingers at no specific police departments in the state of Georgia. But I have seen police cars doing up to 105 miles on the highway not chasing anybody. Not headed to no crime. Nothing. Just speeding. The one thing I can say I don't too like about the police out here, bro, these folks be playing hide and seek something serious how did you pre-plan this hiding spot did you drive around here a few times and say oh if i hide there they're not gonna see me it's so much crime out here being committed and y'all playing hide and seek wait bro Come out. Oh, he's serious. He is serious. This man is making crab sandwiches. Not crab meat sandwiches. Crab sandwiches. I'm flabbergasted. He is a savage. <laughs> Is it better to be single or in a relationship? It depends what stage of life you're in. Right now, I prefer to be in a relationship. Right now? I wouldn't want to be single. I'm 23. I'm about to go into medical school and, like, build my career. So... You don't think you're in your prime right now? And... I'm not in my prime, but, like, it's better to, like, have fun with someone with you than to, be, like, go out by yourself, I think. My mom got married when she was 19. So, I'm late right now. <laughs> not really late, but... Like, it's not out of the ordinary. I know that nowadays it's like people get married like later on, which is fine. But for me, 23 is a good age to settle down. Do you think the same thing goes for men settling down at in their 20s? I think men is very different in the sense that a guy is only going to settle down with you when he's ready. It doesn't matter if you're the right girl or not. It just depends on the time, like the point of his life that he's in. Last video I reacted to about a young lady getting her education, the bros didn't like my response. But I'm keeping the same energy. If I have a daughter, I'm going to encourage her to go to college, get an education. I'm going to encourage her to find a career. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm a forward thinker. I think about all different angles. The last thing I would want is for my daughter to fall in love, be the best housewife she can be, and do that for the wrong person. So the wrong person, go ahead and impregnate my daughter, give my daughter four kids, and decide one day, you know what, I don't like her anymore. I'm going all the way left with it, but sometimes that's how you got to think. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is my daughter be uneducated and have to take care of four kids. And the only thing she knows how to do is be a good housewife. The next man not gonna want her if she coming with four kids, and I don't blame him. And as far as that whole getting married young, I don't believe in that neither. Cause I feel as though that opens up the, the room for the what if resentment. Everybody at one point in time gonna ask themselves, what if? What if I did things this way? If you get married at 20, 21, you haven't even been a full adult yet, living on your own. You went 18 years living with your parents under their rules. You don't even know what life is like with you making your own rules. And you gonna get in a relationship with somebody and have to follow rules of a relationship? Because once you're in a relationship, there's certain things you gotta sacrifice, certain things you can't do. 
So, nah, I believe that you need to give yourself time to be an adult and navigate through the world the way you would like to navigate through the world before you get in a relationship and now you have to navigate through the world thinking about somebody else's feelings.